I'm just going to go over very, very high level facts about the company and sort of where it came from. It's a very new company, so I encourage you to go out, look at our website, review our materials, talk to our IR people, and uh, make sure you thoroughly consider everything before you uh, make any investments. So I joined this company about 16 weeks ago now to really uh, take, take the company forward, having finally raised some money. It was a brand new company that was formed on the view that there is a bull market coming in gold. Um, and I left a base metal company in December of last year when it was bought out by the Chinese. And I also made that own personal decision. I believe there are good fundamentals behind the gold price coming. To Rick's point, I can't say when, but uh, as you'll see, we've got a large portfolio of gold projects that we hope to leverage and build shareholder value by investing small amounts of capital to de-risk those projects uh, going forward. Uh, we do have three projects with both historic and current resources uh, in the company. We've got the Imperial project, which has a historic resource we're currently in the process of updating. That should come out in the next couple weeks. Uh, the historic resource was uh, 0.9 million ounces of M&I and uh, 1.3 million ounces of inferred. That's all oxide, amenable to heap leaching, and we'll talk about that project. It's probably the most important project in the company right now. We also have uh, several exploration projects, which have historic resources drilled by companies in the past that we believe there's really good uh, exploration plays to go uh, find and build some shareholder value. So we have multi-million ounces of gold resources in multiple projects, so it's, it is a portfolio company. We are largely focused on exploration. Uh, we're a new company, so we were private and we bought most of the assets of the company privately in 2015 and 2016 when no one cared about gold, so we got uh, good prices. We went public in November of last year. And really also in a market when no one cared, we looked around to, for the most efficient way to, buy, to get some money into the company. We ended up attracting $4 million from Macquarie Bank. Macquarie Bank is a, a, a resource lending bank out of Australia. They've invested money in the equity of Core and for a 1% royalty on that Imperial project so we can restart permitting. So their use of funds, we have $4 million of their money to go start permitting a mine in California. We then went and said, well, we have this portfolio of other assets and we, you know, we want to be able to you know, drill holes and generate excitement for retail shareholders. So on that end, Eric Sprott came in with a $3 million personal investment into the company in August of this past year. And we're going to be going out and drilling holes and doing exploration work across the portfolio uh, while in the background we're permitting that Imperial project. Uh, we do believe we're undervalued to peers. Uh, you know, if you look at those uh, ounces and look at the value per ounce, it is very low compared to a lot of their companies. I chalk that up to the company being very new. There's not a lot of eyeballs on the company. And that's where partially why we're here. We just over the last month have started marketing the company and we're gonna be spending a lot of time on the road between now and, and Christmas wearing out shoe leather, just trying to get people to understand what core is so that uh, more eyeballs are paying attention to our news as we start actually working on our, our projects. Uh, the capital structure of the company, because of the newness of the company, management and the board currently own 50% of the shares outstanding. That's great because we're fully aligned with you, the shareholder. All we want is per share value accretion. Uh, however, the challenge is that only 34% of the stock's currently trading and it's not very liquid. You can pick up small positions, uh, but you know you certainly were not of institutional grade yet. We just don't have the liquidity. We expect that'll come as we grow and mature the company and ultimately raise additional capital to pursue exploration. And then Macquarie Bank has 5% and Eric Sprott has 11% of the current uh, shares. Current market cap is a little less than, the, is about uh, $30 million Canadian on a 30 cent share price. And last reported uh, cash balance about 5 million bucks uh, in the treasury. Uh, the founder of the company is uh, James Hines and Adrian Rothwell. Adrian is a director and James is the exec chair. They own somewhere in the 40% range of the stock. The other 10% is with the rest of board and management. We have a shared CFO uh, with uh, Klondike and Fiore, keep costs down. We have, uh, and we have three independent directors, Harry Poncrat, Don McDonald, and Brendan Cahill. Harry's a banker. Don is CEO of a company building a zinc mine in Northern Canada and a former KGHM CFO. And Brendan Cahill runs Exelon Resources, which is a silver company uh, based out of Toronto. Nice, nice board, nice tight group. I joined the company because I knew some of these people in Vancouver and I really liked the, uh, the story they were putting together. 
The assets themselves, we have two exploration projects in British Columbia. They're both right near each other in an area called the Caribou. Caribou has, hosts two large copper porphyry mines, the Mount Pauli mine and the Gibraltar mine, and multiple gold companies like Barkerville, Spanish Mountain. So it's a well-established mining jurisdiction. It's road accessible. Our deposits are shallow, and it's nice, low-cost exploration. We don't have to worry about helicopters and remoteness. And it's also an area where there is a good relations with the indigenous peoples that allows you to, to go do work in the, in the area. We then have two projects in California, one called Long Valley, which is in Mono County, California. That's exploration. We're looking to grow the resources at that project to see if it's uh, something that would, could eventually be developed. And then there's the Imperial project, which I sort of started on, which was uh, taken through a full feasibility by Glamis Gold in the 90s. They tried to permit that project, but partially due to Clinton era environmental politics and a collapse in the gold price, they ultimately did not develop that project and Glambus went on to become Gold Corp. Gold Corp went on to become a big company and the project was lost in their portfolio until we bought it out in uh, 2016. We also have a great exploration story at Imperial and I'll just briefly touch on that in the uh, little bit of time I have here. Uh, the share price for core, you can see the, the line is sort of drawn from when we did the uh, reverse takeover of a TSX venture exchange listed company, you know, plus minus the ups and downs. We've been uh, slowly sort of building momentum here. Uh, recently came off to around 30 cents after running up to 41 on Eric's investment. And going forward, we're actually starting to work the assets. We've got a couple drill programs starting. We're starting to do some of the work at Imperial and uh, really get, get to business of spending some of that uh, funding that we've raised. From a news flow perspective, you can see the activity across our assets. The darkest of those gray are things that are fully funded and ready to go. We're currently doing the engineering work to restart permitting at Imperial. That'll be an ongoing activity. Permitting takes a lot one to two years from going public. We'd expect it'll go public probably in Q1 of next year. Uh, we are also doing mapping and geophysics on our exploration ground, redoing our 43101 resource. So that all is all work that we'll be summarizing and bringing out over the next couple months. We also plan to do a PEA on the project, a preliminary economic assessment, so that we can start talking about valuation metrics of Imperial. We currently don't have a uh, current economic assessment in that project. However, an economic study triggers a $1 million US payment to now Newmont, originally Gold Corp, uh, who vended us the asset. And we'd like to be able to pay them in shares. If they agree to that, then we'll commit to timing. And we certainly have the funding and information to do a preliminary economic assessment. And then we'd like to, subject to financing, do some drilling across those exploration claims in, uh, later in, uh, in 2020. We also have those two driller programs coming, one at Long Valley and one at Fraser Gold. And I'll touch on those very briefly. So Imperial, Imperial project is in Imperial County, the namesake county. Imperial is host to, on the right side of this picture, you see a big blue patch of claims. That is the Mesquite Mine. The Mesquite Mine is currently owned by Ross Beatty's Equinox Gold. Produces uh, 100 to 150,000 ounces of gold a year. It's operated for 25 years. It is a large employer and one of the largest tax base companies in Imperial County. However, that project, at least in their last 43-101 report, only has a few years of mining and then residual leaching left. They will sometime in the near term be starting uh, to reduce the labor force. And we believe that is good motivation to get strong support in Imperial County for another heap leach gold mine. Our project is the Imperial project, about eight miles to the uh, west of their project. And the trend that the, those, both those deposits lie on continue right over to the old Picacho mine, which was mined by Glamis in the 90s and is now closed and reclaimed. And Nevsa, or sorry, uh, Core went out and staked all of the ground in between those uh, two projects. Uh, we claimed, made a thousand claims. We think it was the largest staking activity in California in over 50 years. Uh, it cost us about uh, half a million Canadian dollars, but we believe creates an excellent exploration play to go find more deposits in between those three uh, potential mines. And we really like the exploration upside and part of why Eric Sprott invested money was to go out and do the prospecting work to find some drill targets for more mineralization in this uh, great old mineral belt. Our Long Valley project will have a drill program starting in December. It is an old, large oxide gold resource. We believe there is some rich sulfides underneath. So we're going to be some targeting some drilling underneath. And to extend those oxides, we should see some results in Q1. 
And then we also have some BC exploration at Fraser Gold Project. We will be starting a drill program in a few weeks. It'll likely, likely be the most near-term drill results we see in the company. And we're trying to connect up some high-grade components of the old bulk resource that's there. Uh, it's very similar to the Bear Creek story. There's uh, gold aggregated in the hinges of a bunch of folding in the deposit. We're trying to drill ore shoots down through this low grade uh, resource that's currently on the deposit. If we can show there's high grade, we'd like to push that to depth and hopefully build a, a better story that might be more amiable to become a, a development project in the future. Mm -hmm.